athletes. I'm Carrie Tisdall. I'm one of the race directors for Tri Clear Lake. And typically on Friday night before a race day, we do a Tri 101, just kind of a, if you haven't done a race before, if you want a refresher, if you just want to hear, you know, how maybe someone else does it, we have a little meeting at six o'clock before race day to go over those things. So we're gonna do it in my backyard because we don't wanna have a whole bunch of people in one spot and usually we do have 50 or 60 people come. So I'm gonna talk real briefly about um, the course itself because as you can tell, we're kind of running out of daylight here. Um, and then I have a transition area set up here in my backyard um, so that we can kind of go over how you should rack your bike and some tips as far as setting up your transition area. And um, if we have time and it's not dark, go over a little bit about uh, race day nutrition and leading up to race day. Um, so course wise, obviously transition, as I'm sure most of you are aware, is at State Park Beach. It's gonna be a really big area. There's only gonna be four racks to a bike, or four bikes to a rack, excuse me, which is really awesome because you're gonna have a lot of space to put your stuff. Um, the sprint course will be a rectangle. Um, you'll go in on the south side of State Park Beach and you will swim in a rectangle basically and come out on the north side of State Park Beach. We will have large um, arches at the start and the finish and so it'll be really obvious where you should be swimming um, out when you're when you're trying to sight. We'll be releasing you from the transition area by wave to come down to the beach where you can have enough space to spread out and then we'll be putting people in the water approximately every three seconds. So it'll be almost consecutive when we do the swim start. Olympic athletes will go first, followed by sprint, sprint distance athletes. The bike course will leave from State Park Beach on, or excuse me, the bike course will leave State Park on the south side. Um, you will go out of State Park and head to the west on South Shore. It'll be very clearly marked. There'll be lots of volunteers and um, there's just a couple of turns that'll be very, very obvious and it'll be well marked, like I said. Um, it, is not a, it is not an out and back bike course. You'll actually come back on the road if you're familiar where the Clear Lake Sanitation Department is um, and, and do a second loop for the Olympic distance course. The run course is a point to point run course, which is kind of fun. You don't, um, you, you'll leave on the um, same side that the swim comes in on. You will run out. Um, you run along the shoreline all the way to the surf ballroom, you get to basically run along the lakeside. So it's a beautiful run. The Olympic distance course will run past the finish line, which yes, you have to run past the finish line, but there's lots of spectators and there'll be lots going on. So it'll be a fun environment to run through and you'll um, run a little ways out, not all the way back to State Park and turn around and come back for another loop. Um, okay, so transition area. Like I said, there'll be four bikes to a rack and you want to make sure, and there will be an official in transition, one, maybe two USA Triathlon officials, to help you make sure that your bike is racked correctly, answer any questions you have. Um, one important thing that they'll be looking for, this is a, a time trial bike, or a tri bike, so it doesn't have bar ends like the, like the um, hoods on a regular road bike would, but you do need to make, you ha make sure you have those bar ends plugged. So we will have bike support there that should have some of those available if you don't but that is something they'll be looking for as it's just kind of a safety hazard um you want to have your front wheel down when you rack your bike and you'll go opposite so um the bike next to you should be racked the other way and again officials and and the volunteers in transition will help make sure that your bikes are racked correctly um, we do want you to put all of your gear out on the side where your wheel is down um, as far as which side of your bike, it doesn't really matter as long as everybody in the same line is doing the same thing. So you want to put um, all your gear down at your wheel side. I do recommend bringing a towel, one, maybe maybe two. Um, you have, like I said, you'll have a little more space than usual to set up your tra transition gear, which is kind of nice. Um, and when you go to set up transition, you want to think about setting it up in the order that you're going to need it. Um, so, you know, I have my wetsuit, my goggles, and my swim cap up where it's, they're easily accessible. We will provide a swim cap for you, um, as you probably know. Wetsuits are not required. They will be allowed if, if the water temperature is 78 degrees or lower. And we do anticipate that it will be. It's actually really chilly tonight, so we need some cool evenings this week so that um, the water temperature stays down so that it will be wetsuit legal. Um, 
but when you leave transition area to go down to the swim, you will not be coming back. So if you're taking flip-flops down to the beach with you, typically I tell people not to bother with flip-flops, just to leave with only what you need for the swim course. So that would be your wetsuit if you're wearing one, your swim cap, and your goggles. If you decide to wear flip-flops, have them be flip-flops that maybe you don't care about losing. You can kick them off before you get in the water and, and come back and get them um, at the end of the day when you come back to transition to, to retrieve your bike and your gear. But um, we are asking that you do not bring spectators to State Park Beach. And the reason for that is COVID, of course, as you can probably imagine. And we are planning to live stream the swim. So spectators will be able to go to City Beach and still, still watch the swim. So, um, we definitely want you to be able to do that, but just to make it uh, safe for our spectators and our athletes. Um, so, your wetsuit is obviously what you need first, and I'll kind of talk through my setup, and then I'll give you a few tips as far as things that I do. Um, when I set up my transition area, like I mentioned, I always put things in order of how I'm going to need them, because transition is truly a split, and you want to do everything as fast as you can and try to do as little as possible standing still. So um, when I come out of the swim, actually I take that back, I'll talk about when I exit the swim, before I start the swim, <laughs> I do have a couple of products like um, there's a spray that's for, um, it's kind of a body glide spray or actual body glide, which I use and I always put it, if you're wearing a wetsuit or even if you're prone to chafing and you've got a, a tri kit on, um, around kind of around your neck places where you want your wetsuit to slide off easily your wrist your ankles um, but definitely around around your neck where the zipper and velcro is um, some of you may be wondering you know what should I wear under my under my wetsuit or what should I wear for the swim portion so I did just lay out you know there's triathlon kits so just shorts that are tri shorts not cycling shorts I don't recommend wearing cycling shorts for a triathlon because they have too much padding and that padding holds a lot of water so it won't be very comfortable by the end of the race if you decide to do that. But you want to, whatever you choose to wear on race day, you want it to be typically what you wear for the entire race. Um, if, if you feel like it's gonna be chilly, which it's not, the high is 85 for Saturday, you know, you could certainly always throw something over for sleeves in transition for future races if, if you needed that. Um, so with the swim start, You'll see if you um, get in the water to warm up, it is a little bit shallow at the start and, and finish of the race of the swim course. Um, that being said, I always recommend you try and swim rather than run, you know, in waist deep water or, you know, even thigh deep water, just because you're gonna use less energy swimming than you would be running in water. Um, when you go to come out of the water, I always tell people, you know, it's crazy because you think, oh, there's not much to think about. You're just getting out of the water and running to transition. But the first thing that you should do is put your goggles on your head. You don't want to take your goggles and your swim cap off right away, especially if you have a wetsuit on because then your hands aren't free to take care of your wetsuit. So you want to put your goggles on your head and reach back and unzip your wetsuit. And actually, as you're running, again, you want to do as much as you can while moving. Um, while you're running, take your wetsuit sleeves off and take it down to your waist. Um, and then you can take your goggles and your swim cap off, run the rest of the way up to transition, run, walk, whatever you need to do. When you get to your space, that's when you wanna pull your, put your, put your swim cap and goggles down and pull your wetsuit off inside out. So it should, if you have some body glide or any tri-slide, it should slide off really quickly. Um, you can kind of step on it uh, to get it off inside out as quickly as you can and then you want to kind of keep your things in your own space but you, you do you, you throw it over the bike rack throw it in the back of your transition area whatever you're doing to kind of respect other people's space but to get it off and out of your way um so then when you're going to the bike portion of the race some people you'll see have their helmets on their um aero bars like i do here if you don't have aero bars sometimes i put mine right on top of my bike shoes so I typically set up my transition area so that everything is in the order that I'm going to need them. And I, do, I recommend deciding, are you going to work, you know, bottom to top or top to bottom when you're in the next phase or in your transition um, position. So if you're going top to bottom, you grab your sunglasses, do sunglasses on, helmet on, 
and race belt. If you don't have a race belt or if you didn't before race day, you're going to have one on Friday or Saturday whenever you pick up your packet because you'll find sneak peek you're getting a custom tri Triclear Lake race belt. Um, now the race belts do have, a, I mean, they have a nice buckle. And for years and years and years, I always fumbled with a buckle in transition. I would, you know, get to my transition spot and I left my, and I, and I would fumble with this buckle. So you can definitely do that. You can buckle it in transition or you can step into it. So that's that's actually what, what I prefer to do. It's a preference thing and some, you know, everybody might do it a little bit different, but that's for me been the fastest way to do that. You just don't want to pull this front part too tight because then your number will rip. So you want to make sure you don't, don't pull it too tight. Um, so then some people, I actually didn't bring socks out here tonight because I forgot. Depending on temperature, that's a, that's a personal preference. Um, but you don't want to try something on race day that you haven't practiced before now. So if you normally wear socks when you bike and run, you should wear socks when you bike and run on transition or on, on race day. If you don't, depending on distance, then you know that's, that's your preference. But if I was going to wear socks, I would have, and again, this may seem like a little thing, but my shoes are always open and I have one sock in each shoe if I'm going to be wearing socks. Now, some people you'll see bring buckets into transition or worried about rinsing their feet off. I always just have a second towel, so I have like a smaller hand towel in transition. And by the time you run <laughs> through the sand, through the grass, all the way to your spot, usually you can just kind of wipe your feet off with a little bit of sand that's left. Um, get your socks on. Some people like to sit down, some stand up. You've probably seen, <clears throat> whether you've, if you've watched professional triathlon on TV or you know you may have heard about flying mounts and dismounts, which that's absolutely a thing. It takes a lot of practice, in which case you have actually your bike shoes uh, rubber banded to your bike and you uh, run with your bike and then put your shoes on as you're already riding. And I guess that for people that are great at that, that's great. But what I tell people is that the there's usually greater risk than reward. So it, it takes a lot of practice, like I said, and you know, fumbling around with that could risk more time or, or crashing that I do recommend, unless you're really good at it, to just put your shoes on in transition and, and run with your bike. Um, so when you get your shoes on, you'll unrack your bike and you can run it you know, some people run by their handlebars. That's where you have the most control. Um, or if you've practiced again, I do recommend practicing um, to run by the seat of your bike and, and run next to your bike. Your helmet has to be buckled before you leave transition or you could get a penalty and you cannot get on your bike in transition at all. So sometimes people forget that. We will have volunteers in transition to make sure you know that you can't get on your bike in transition. Um, so there'll be a mount dismount line. They'll be very vocal there. Um, they'll have you slow down when you approach the dismount line and you want to dismount there and then run your bike back into the exact location that you had left it. Um, rack it the same way. And really T2 is, is a lot, it's a lot quicker. There is less to remember there. Oh, the other thing I was going to tell you about your race number, this is not required on the bike because you will be marked. Um, and just to touch on that real quick, We'll be providing markers in, in your race bags and you're going to be responsible for marking yourself this year thanks to COVID. Um, so you will have your race number on your bicep, on both biceps and on both legs and on the back of your right leg, on the back of your right calf, you'll write or have someone else write, it'll be hard, hard to write on your own calf, um, your age as of December 31st of this year. So that is the age group that you'll be in. If you are in a relay or in a FINA or Clydesdale division, you'll put an R for relay, a C for Clydesdale, and an A for Athena. So that's that. So if you have your race belt on for the bike, I always do it because it's one less thing to think about on the on T2. And if I forget in T1, then I have T2 to remember it. But um, you must have your race number on for the run. So if you haven't done that, you need to do that. But really, it's just changing your shoes if you are wearing cycling shoes. So I always have my running shoes behind and it's really just my running shoes and my visor and a water bottle. So I do recommend bringing, you know, at least two water bottles for sprint distance. If you've got a water bottle on your bike and then you've got one in transition so you can grab a quick drink, I guess I recommend that more now than ever because we do have water on the course, on the run course, but it's going to be in closed bottles so that it's, um, you know, less 
risk of <coughs> germs or anything like that. So I do recommend having your own water bottle so you can grab a quick drink if you'd like in transition. Um, so really it's just a matter of changing your shoes, throwing your visor on, and again, your visor or messing with your waist belt or whatever, that's stuff you can do on the move. So usually I get my shoes on my feet and I leave. So I can, you know, put my visor on, straighten my race belt and all of that as I head out on the run. Um, same thing with, I usually have some form of energy if I feel like I need it in transition. For a sprint distance race, you really, if you fueled properly in the days leading up to race day and had a breakfast, you know, two to three hours before the race, you shouldn't need to use a lot of nutrition products for a sprint distance triathlon. Um, but for the Olympic distance, you, you may want to grab something and take it with you or take something when you're in transition. So that's the other thing I would recommend to have. Um, along the lines of nutrition, I, I always have salt tablets. So if you're someone that might cramp or is prone to excessive sweating in really hot situations, it's really just sodium, it's just that. So I, I always have that with me. I have it in transition. So in either T1 or T2, I can grab it and put it in my back pocket. Again, if this is stuff that you're like, oh gosh, should I have that? But you've never trained with it. I don't recommend starting it or trying it now. Um, but just, just a reminder to have it in transition if it's something you're, you've used before and it's something that's helped you. Um, so just real, real briefly, because like I said, we are running out of daylight. As far as the nutrition piece goes, just a little race day. What if people ask me, well, what should I do? You know, I recommend trying to keep it bland on race morning uh, and eating two to three hours before you're going to get in the water. So something like uh, oatmeal with peanut butter in it or peanut butter toast, or can you tell I like peanut butter? <laughs> um, I usually work that in somewhere. Or a banana uh, is okay. And then in the time once you get into transition area, uh, again, bringing something like a cliff bar or, you know, some, maybe pack, packaged nutrition product that you can kind of eat while you're getting ready or even, you know, the honey stinger. Uh, you can go if you're here local and you want to go to Wayne's. They do have honey stingers and the waffles and they, they're our bike support and you'll see them there on race morning and they have a lot of great um, nutrition products there if you, if you want to go and um, check it out. Same with uh, if you're if you're looking for um, any last minute bike supplies or um, you know gear that you need might need on race day, you can certainly um, check with their, them, and I would recommend that. We will, as as you know, it's a point to point run, so your finish is going to be downtown. So all of your gear will be safe and will be um, watched in transition as you finish the race, and. Um, we will have trolley rides back to transition for you to pick everything up after the race is complete. And we're so excited that you're going to be racing with us and we've taken a lot of steps to make sure it's going to be a safe and really great day. So hopefully this has been helpful and good luck. We'll see you on Saturday.